Hello guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Hit the bell icon button so that you don't miss out any tutorial. Part 3. Practical Security for the IoT Paradigm In Part 1, we learned about IoT and the security challenges that it faces. In Part 2, we learned some ways to protect data at various layers. And now, in Part 3, I aim to merge those two together for security in context. Personal data is being collected in the context of many online services and applications to an ever greater extent. The move towards greater digitalization also means that offline processes will increasingly be supplemented or even replaced by online solutions in the future, a development which will also increase the risk of personal data being accorded insufficient protection and thus potentially vulnerable to misuse. That brings us to Chapter 8 privacy impact assessments. First of all, it's important to know that a data privacy impact assessment is a very specific thing and not just a colloquial industry term. Data privacy impact assessments, or DPIAs, are a tool to identify risks which consumers are becoming exposed to with the rapid adoption and use of new systems and technology. Specifically, risks that may compromise an individual's fundamental right to privacy and protection of their personal data. The DPIA is largely driven by the advent of GDPR, where you may even be legally required to carry out a DPIA if your device will be collecting, storing, or processing European Union citizen personally identifiable information, or PII, all before it is launched to the market. Some benefits of doing a DPIA, whether you have to or not, include from a product developer perspective, you'll be able to better manage your development processes. The need for any subsequent amendments in line with data protection regulations can be easily dispensed with. Data breaches and the associated subsequent financial losses and loss of reputation can be avoided. And lastly, your compliance with the relevant legislations will be assured. An example of IoT privacy as an issue can be seen in the development of smart cities in Kansas City in the United States. IoT devices, which lack physical visibility, such as discrete cameras, mean that individuals don't know that their data is being collected. Video cameras are embedded in Kansas City's streetlights to help identify parking availability in designated areas. The ultimate goal was to create a parking app for citizens. And although the systems engineer assured that the footage would not be stored, but instead overwritten every 36 hours, the interconnectedness of IoT still complicates security. For instance, the movement of data from the video cameras to an app requires the data, even if temporarily collected, to be transmitted through a cloud provider and apps such as Waze. In a similar example, the now commonly used video camera doorbells also entail unexpected privacy problems. While the homeowner may consent to being recorded in front of their own door, a visitor whose data has the potential to be stored in the cloud does not have an opportunity to consent. This is a problem because the footage collected on the citizens could remain permanently stored somewhere or at least vulnerable to hacking without that individual's consent. There are missing standards and procedures for connecting sensors to cloud providers leaving citizens without privacy rights around their data collected in public spaces daily. Both the digital infrastructure in Kansas City and the video doorbell scenario do not give individuals the option to avoid tracking, which ultimately leaves anyone vulnerable through their collected information without their clear consent. By simply existing within the boundaries of these smart cities or someone's doorway, individuals are compromising their privacy without even realizing it. In this segment, I will cover how to actually conduct one. First of all, let's set an expectation of what good looks like when conducting a data privacy impact assessment. An effective data privacy impact assessment must contain at least a general description of your processing operations and their purposes, an assessment of the risks to the rights and freedoms of individuals, the measure measures envisaged to address those risks, 
the safeguards, security measures, and mechanisms in place to ensure that you protect that personal data. First of all, you should determine the need and scope for a data privacy impact assessment. A data privacy impact assessment would gener generally be required before you process personal data and when the processing is likely to result in a high risk to the rights and freedoms of individuals. Processing that data is likely to result in a high risk, including, but not limited to, systematic and extensive processing activities, including profiling, and where decisions that have legal effects or similarly significant effects on individuals. Large-scale processing of special categories of data or personal data relation to criminal convictions or offenses. The use of new technologies, for example, surveillance systems or facial recognition. You must also take into account the nature, scope, context, and purposes of the processing when deciding whether or not it is likely to result in a high risk to individuals' rights and freedoms. The objective of describing data flows is to walk through the information lifecycle of your solution to identify unforeseen or unintended uses of the data. You will want to ensure that the individuals using the information your solution provides are consulted on practical implications. It is also important to consider the future uses of the information being collected, even if it is not immediately useful or harmful. Consider these factors when describing your data flow. What data that device is collecting or processing, such as names, criminal records, or biometrics. The medium on which the data is being stored or processed. Is it paper, a USB drive, flash storage directly on the device, or a database somewhere in the cloud? How does data get from its source to its destination? Does it travel over a network? Where is the data located? Where is the device located? Where do the databases live? These are all important things to consider when you're constructing a data flow. This should start to feel familiar to what we learned way back in Chapter 3 on threat modeling though the purpose of a data privacy impact assessment is slightly different. That said, there is unfortunately no popular method yet to carry one out, like STRIDE for threat modeling. There are, however, some questions that you can ask yourself to identify what data protection related tasks are required of your security solution. How is the personal data being collected? Who is accountable for the personal data? What is the location of systems containing the data? Who has access to this information? Is the information disclosed or shared with anyone? Does the system interface with or transfer information to other systems? Again, just like mitigating threats, our solutions that address risk to data privacy should span across all stages of the IoT architecture where appropriate. While certainly not an exhaustive list, some domains to consider when approaching data privacy would be Role-based security. We covered this in the chapter on identity and access management. But to restate, this is the idea of short-term ephemeral credentials used to govern permissions. The alternative to role-based security in an IoT context would be to assign every single device that you have or produce unique login credentials. Security aside, that is a very daunting task. Anti-temper detection relatively self-explanatory and covered earlier as well in the chapter about physical security at the sensors and actuators level. Preventing threats to privacy begins with reducing the attack surface in the first place and detecting it when it has been tampered with. Data protection and confidentiality, or in other words, encryption. Refer back to the earlier chapter on data protection for strategies in this field. Network protection. Also covered previously, protecting the network will prevent unauthorized access to data as it travels through your system. The major driving force for the data privacy impact assessment is the European Union's GDPR. However, since the dawn of GDPR, similar regulations have been emerging in other parts of the world also. Understanding how your device is used in your target market could mean that you have to comply with certain legal requirements. A DPIA exercise is not technically required for even GDPR, although it is in some specific cases. However, 
all of these regulations shown here, and the ones yet to come, will state some sort of requirement to demonstrate compliance with it, which makes doing a DPIA exercise worth it anyways. Additionally, the DPIA itself is not specific to any one existing regulation and would suffice for any. You've enumerated your solutions, you've documented your legal requirements, now, just like your threat modeling, you need to establish a plan of action. This plan and the results of it are going to be paramount if and when you are challenged about the privacy of your solution. First, define the roles and the specific access they have or need for the device to operate. Define the network ports necessary to communicate information. Make modifications, if necessary, to the physical housing of your device. Enforce data integrity with a standard communication format, preferably over an API. Anything else that you can think of that is actionable in pursuit of your requirements are valid here. Sometimes an action is simply a documented policy and doesn't always have to be technical. Overall privacy experts agree that a thorough assessment, design and implementation changes are required to the privacy frameworks for IoT, especially in the following areas. Privacy needs to be embedded in the device. All IoT devices should be forced to follow a strict agreed upon protocol for preventing leakage of personal information and non-identification. Encryption is your best friend. All communication to and from the IoT devices should be protected by the principles of data in motion. This includes employing SSL and VPNs for secure transfer of signals. Store data responsibly. This includes storing only the bare minimum amount of information required, as well as employing the best identity access management tools for proper authentication and authorization to store the data. Adopt strict design and development frameworks. Frameworks like, for example, privacy by design, ensure that the, de that the developers have treated privacy and security as an integral part of the software design. Usually the security layer gets implemented in the latter stages of the software timeline. Doing so significantly reduces the effectiveness of security controls. In this segment, I set out to address privacy concerns raised in the previous segment in the form of a data privacy impact assessment. This concludes the chapter on this topic. The next chapter, in chapter 9, is about secure development. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you like the video, do give us a thumbs up and share it. Also check out amazing discounts and offers on our premium courses in the description below.